Hey guys, it's Palm Primus here, and welcome to a Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain Theory. And alright, before I get into this, I just want to tell you guys right off the bat this is just a theory, an opinion based off the evidence I've collected and some of the research I did. I, if you guys don't agree with my theory, you don't have to, alright? But please do not kill each other down in the comment section below. I've seen a lot of videos about theories of Metal Gear Solid 5 and people down in the comment section below are really hostile for no reason. They call the person's theory stupid, and then they don't give supportive evidence to why their theory is stupid and everything like that. If you guys don't know, the definition of a theory is a possibility of something might being true without any proven evidence to prove it. Alright, a theory is just that, like string theory. String theory, a lot of scientists say that string theory is an actual um, real thing application and everything like that. But they can't prove it because they don't have the technology, so it's just a theory. Like the theory of Roswell, you know, it's just a theory, we don't have too much evidence supporting it. There are, you know, little snippets here and there indicating that Roswell could have happened and everything, but there's not concrete evidence 100% sure. There's no alien walking in front of Washington DC saying, Yes, we are the ones from Area 51 and we landed in Roswell in 1950-whatever and everything like that. So, I, I, you know, just take that into consideration. Please, guys, don't kill each other. This is just a theory, an opinion. And I actually want to hear your theories on Metal Gear Solid 5, whether it be on this theory I'm going to be talking about today or anything else about the game itself. And I figured to do this to kill some time until the game comes out in a few few weeks, actually. So it's really close. It's around the corner. I'm really excited about it. So the, the, the theory I want to talk about today is actually who is Ishmael and are we really playing as big boss in this game? And I'll get off right off the bat right now. Yes, I think we're playing as Big Boss. Even though there's other people saying they could be Gray Fox, to be honest, um, the only person that can actually convince, that actually, not convince me, kind of uh, gave me the possibility of Gray Fox being uh, Big Boss is Python, Selk, and HD. They did a really good job. I think they have over like seven hours of information kind of connecting things together. Obviously, some things are a little bit, ah, uh, he's kind of reaching there. Other things are a little bit, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense and everything like that. Um, but I'm like 30% sure that it could be Gray Fox and 70% sure that it's most likely just Big Boss. But this is the big kicker. He has a multiple personality disorder, okay? And the reason why I want to say that is because... You know, the Grey Fox series cooling on and everything, but I feel like the multiple personality disorder fits a little bit better with it. Okay, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is in the, I think it was the E3 2015 trailer, they showed Big Boss in front of a mirror, he's looking at himself in the mirror, and he punches the mirror like he's disgusted because he's covered in blood, he has the horn and everything like that. He probably killed his comrades or killed innocent lives or something like that, right? And that's very common um, with people with multiple personality disorders in which they will talk to themselves in the mirror and sometimes if they, you know, they the other personality of theirs is talking so much bullshit, they punch the mirror and everything, or they try to break the mirror. And there's been cases like that. There, I've, I've researched it. There has been cases that actually happens where they they want the voices to stop in their head. They want that personality to leave away, to go away. So they punch whatever reflection is they they see the other person in. Uh, another a good example actually would be Spider-Man. In Spider-Man One, the the one with. Uh, uh, Toby, uh, what was his guy? I forgot. I forgot that crappy ass actor. Uh, whatever. That guy, Tommy McGuire. There we go. Tommy McGuire. Um, in the first movie of that one, Spider-Man, a uh, Green Goblin. Um, I think Harry Osborn is talking to himself in the mirror, and he's talking to the Green Goblin personality of himself. And the camera pans back and forth to the mirror and to him, to the mirror, to him, kind of showing that they're two different characters, but really they're one and the same. They're just looking in a mirror. Maybe this is what's happening with Big Boss. Um, and you're probably wondering, okay, why is he getting a multiple personality disorder? Well, now let's look into this. What if during the incident of Ground Zeroes, you know, the helicopter scene where he gets hit and everything and he apparently goes into a coma? There have been cases where people get a head trauma, they get amnesia, they they actually start changing their uh, voice, their their uh, you know their tone of voice changes to something different. Um, they speak a different dialect. There's been cases where they they somebody actually spoke like I think there was one guy uh, American, pure blood American, you know from the south and everything. He gets bumped on the head and boom, he starts speaking French out of nowhere and pretty good damn French too. And they're kind of confused about it. There's been other cases where um, actual people have been hit in the head and they actually change their personality altogether. 
then one day they were a complete asshole and then when they got hit in the head they became nice and everything like that uh, i think there was one incident with this guy with a railroad spike in his head he got shrapnel stuck in his head and he actually what he actually changed his personality personality actually changed and became like a totally different person and everybody was saying wow this guy's completely different than he was before um so with that being said he has shrapnel his head so and that railroad spike incident that i was talking about i think it was like in the 1800s um is an indication that maybe big boss got hit so hard on the head and since he has a shrapnel on top of that he's his personality has changed and so Basically, when we see in, um, I think it was like an E3 2013 or whatever, we see that the very first Phantom Pain trailer where we see Ishmael and then we see Big Boss and Big Box is waking up and he's all groggy, right? And he's kind of confused what's going on here. Maybe that Big Boss with the claw, let's call him Big Boss with the claw, um, essentially is the new personality, the new uh, Big Boss, if you would, with the different traits and all that stuff. And the Ishmael that we see there the guy, actually, the Ishmael, the guy that we see there is Big Boss in his true nature. And let me explain why I mean by that. Big Boss, as all we know, is a great guy. He's very loyal. Um, you know, he, he seems like a really nice dude. Like, he does, he does not like being an asshole. He does not like fucking over his comrades. And he, if it means killing civilians, he, he, he wouldn't do it. He couldn't. He's not that type of person that will kill, kill civilians for, uh, for, uh, for a certain cause. Like, he, he's not that type of person. He's, like, you know, throughout the game, Peace Walker, throughout uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 and all that, he's... Seems like a legit guy, you know? He sleeps with Eva, and when Eva leaves him, he's all sad, like, God, man, I thought we were boyfriend and girlfriend now. Shit. Like, you know, you don't get that feeling that Big Boss is a douchebag. And in, in the trailers that we've seen so far with Phantom Pain, we see that Big Boss shoots little kids. He's, oh, so-called shoot. We're not really sure. It's kind of, the, it just shows Big Boss's face shooting, but we don't know what he's shooting at, right? But it's insinuating that he was shooting the, the little African kids there who were slaves uh, and doing the uh, um, diamond mines and all that stuff. So, of that being said, Ishmael is the formal self of Big Boss, right? And let's think about this. When Ishmael confronts um, Big Boss, uh, we'll call him uh, Captain Hook here. We'll call him Captain Hook for now. Well, he confronts Captain Hook here and tells Captain Hook, hey, look, I've been watching you over for nine years. And I'm thinking to myself, who in the fuck would be watching this guy over for nine years? That's kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't fit. Like, it, it, whether it be Gray Fox or whether it be Kaz or be anybody or the medic or anything like that, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would they be there for nine years watching him? And on top of that, this guy looks like he has bandages all over his face. Why? Because what if Big Boss is forgetting who he truly was? And that's why he has bandages all on his face, because he's forgetting of who he was. He still kind of keeps those traits here and there. Uh, another thing I want to take into uh, talk about is that Ishmael, a lot of people are kind of connecting Ishmael with the biblical uh, character that was abandoned and everything like that and um, exiled by his father Abraham and all that. But if you remember, Kido Kojima, I don't think is really using that Ishmael, I think he's using Ishmael from Moby Dick. Even though that Ishmael from Moby Dick does take characteristics from uh, the story in the biblical terms, but since there's a lot of references to Moby Dick here, first off, when they first announced Phantom Pain, what was the studio called? Moby Dick Studios. On top of that, we see a whale, and on top of that, um, whatchamacallit, Ishmael calls, I think he calls it at one time Big Boss Abe. Like, Come on, Abe, and everything like that. Now, let's talk about Ishmael and Abe. Who are these characters in the book? First off, Ishmael is the protagonist. He is the narrator of the book and the guide in the book entirety. While a uh, Ahab is basically the um, mariner who wants to kill the white whale, which is Moby Dick, because he took off his leg. And he's out for what? Vengeance. All right? Ahab is out for vengeance to kill the white whale because the white whale took off his leg, right? So, Captain Hook over here, Big Boss, wants to take vengeance. So, the, the Big Boss that we're playing as is basically Ahab. He's the one, he's, it's the side of Big Boss that wants to take vengeance, that will do anything. And to be honest, in, Abe, in, uh, in the book of Moby Dick and everything, um, Ahab would do anything to get this whale. He would do anything 
and the guy was crazy. The other mariners in the book, the other captains who have other ships, you know, chasing after whale, um, state that Ahab is fucking crazy. And there was one guy, I forgot his name was, but there was a captain there um, who stated that, yeah, I had my, I think he had his arm chopped off by the whale and everything, but he did not seek vengeance against the whale because that is just crazy because that whale is known to basically beat every ship that it came encounter with. And Ishmael is this new mariner, goes onto the boat of Ahab. Um, and if you guys are wondering, there's the, the helicopter and ground and uh, the Phantom Pain, I think it's called uh, Pequod or Pequod, which is the, actually the same name of the boat in the book itself, right? So I think it's more related to the Moby Dick reference rather than biblical reference. So that being said, Ishmael's the, the main protagonist, and he actually respects Ahab as a sailor. Like, he's like he sees Ahab as like, oh, this guy's pretty badass, and everything like that. Um, on top of that, the current big boss that we see that we're playing as in the game with the hook and everything like that, he's missing a limb. Like who? Abhab. Holy shit. And there's another thing I want to point out right here. You're probably seeing the image right now. Big boss in the, in the, um, in the Phantom Pain, the final release of the Phantom Pain, as we see with the image of his face and the scars he has, he has a scar running down his eye, right? Um, and you know what? Abhab has a similar scar too. He has a scar going down that same side of his face as well. Okay, so let's try to put this together. Uh, we'll call him Venom Snake now. So Venom Snake has a scar going down his eye just like Abhab. He's missing a limb like Abhab and he's out for vengeance like Abhab. Holy crap, the character you're playing as is the personality that seeks vengeance and is basically the dark side of Big Boss. So Ishmael, what is he exactly? Well, Ishmael, in this instance, is a hallucination. He's just basically the part of Big Boss, like I said, that is being forgotten. That's why he has bandages on his face, because he's forgetting who he is and everything like that. And that's why he still has all his limbs. On top of that, a lot of people do bring up a point that Ishmael at no point helps out Big Boss only during the beginning to like help him up and inject him, and it doesn't work, right? What if that hallucination of him getting up was just his mind telling him, hey, get up, get up. And so Ishmael was helping him out to just get up from laying down. And, and that's probably the reason why the injection didn't work because it was no injection. It was a hallucination. It was basically a placebo effect, if you would, right? And so uh, Big Boss gets up and Ishmael the whole time does not help him out. If Ishmael was a soldier just like Big Boss, if, if Ishmael was the medic or Gray Fox or something like that, wouldn't that guy with soldier experience, especially being a medic, carry him firefighter carry, all right? He would do the firefighter carry uh, with him and everything like that, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it at all. He doesn't even help him. He doesn't put him in a wheelchair. Hell, if you put him on the wheelchair, he can go scoot by him real quick, but he doesn't because he's just a hallucination and he can't really physically help him out. He can only kind of push his mind to it. Like when you're in the gym and you're pushing your mind to it and you're like, hear that voice in your head like, come on, I gotta lift that last weight. Come on, uh, come on, yeah, yeah. I can imagine, I can imagine it. And that, that sounded really wrong, but uh, yeah, basically that's what it is. It's Ishmael just kind of pushing Big Boss to keep going but without actually physically touching him. Um, and then, you know, also the fact that Ishmael is guiding Big Boss and essentially, uh, or like if you would say narrating, if you would, like Ishmael does in the book of Moby Dick and everything where he's, gui he's narrating and guiding everything that's happening. On top of that, Hey guys, it's Bomb Primus here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this one, press the link in the top left corner right there. Otherwise, press the link in the top right corner to take you to a random ass video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Palm Primus Zero, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. This is Palm Primus. Keep it crunchy and peace out.